Welcome to Photoshop and today we're going to start a new series of tutorials. This is going to be a simple one and I am going to give you the option to follow along with me. So I'm going to be downloading some images off Pixabay, which I have no affiliation, but it's a site in which you can download an image and use it without any attribution. They're free to use and basically you're not going to get in any trouble for using the images. I've downloaded this image and when I was getting out of school, there was a photographer named Phil Borges and he took these really dramatic portraits of people out in Africa. And what he would do is he shot them in black and white. And then when he was printing, and this is back in the chemical printing days, he would take rubber cement and either paint it on the subject or the background and use that as a resist. And then he would sepia tone the area that did not have the resist to give it a little bit of color. Today, I'm gonna to go over that same process, but we're gonna do it inside of Photoshop and it is a whole lot easier and less time consuming. The first step in the process is we need to select out our subject. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to grab the quick selection tool. And then we're just gonna let Photoshop select our subject. So we're gonna select subject. We're gonna see how well that Photoshop selects this out. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit Command Plus just so I can zoom in and see some areas. So we have an area right here that wasn't selected. You'll notice I have a pretty small brush and we're just gonna see if we can add to these areas or subtract. To subtract, you're gonna hold Alt Option and it's gonna subtract. It's like we missed that finger, so I'm gonna hit Shift. That's for add. That's pretty close, that's pretty close. Actually did pretty good on the feet. Just try to get the rest of this foot and a little less of that and a little less of this. It's not perfect, but we can eventually go back into Photoshop and paint into the mask. We're gonna come up here and check or select, select and mask. And that's just gonna let us refine the selection. You would normally go through here and look at any area. So right here you can see where it didn't select as well. I'm actually gonna use the hair refining tool and we're just gonna use smart radius. I'm gonna come in here and reduce my brush size a little bit and just kind of paint over that area. And basically you're telling Photoshop, hey, you didn't do this perfect. Go ahead and see if you can select this a little bit better. So trying to get inside of her hand there. And the rest looks pretty good. We're not really going into a complicated selection in this video. So I want to output is a new layer with a mask and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And I will zoom out, which is command minus. And you can see that we have now selected our subject out. Is it perfect? No, but we can go in and paint in the mask later. We don't even need to do it now. I'm gonna turn the background layer on cause I wanna see this whole image. The next step that we need to do is to turn this image black and white. But I need two black and white layers. So I'm actually gonna put one in between these two layers. Click on the background layer, cause when I click on this black and white adjustment down here, notice it's gonna be in between the layers and it's just making it on the background. We're gonna set our background and just go ahead and adjust that. And that looks pretty good there. Then I'm gonna come up to the next layer and I'm gonna make another black and white adjustment. And this is gonna just adjust this top portion of our subject. And we're gonna come in here and kind of fiddle with this and we'll tone it to how we like it. Now the trick is we don't want this right now, this black and white adjustment is overriding everything cause it is on top. Layer order is very specific inside of Photoshop. We wanna create a what's called a clipping mask. And this black and white adjustment layer is only gonna now apply to this. So I'm gonna hold the Alt option and go in between the two layers and click. And you'll see we get this little arrow. And this is saying, hey, this adjustment is only gonna be applied to this. Now you can't really tell unless I turn this off that now you can see it's just applying to that one specific area. We want everything to be black and white. And you'll see why here in a second. So the next step is to come down here and we're just gonna use photo filter to create this sepia tone. 
I'm going to click on this. We're going to come up and drop down to sepia. We'll just add a little bit more so we have a little bit more sepia to it. And then once again, we're going to create a clipping mask and apply it just to this layer. But this time I'm going to do it a different way. If you come out here into the space, not where the type is, and you right click, you can get create clipping mask. And that's the other way to create a clipping mask. So now where we've sepia toned, it's just on our subject. So the only thing that we really need to do now is come into that mask and clean that up. So I'm going to zoom into the feet here. I'm going to hold space bar and move my image up and make sure your mask is selected. We're going to grab the brush at hundred percent. Any area that you add white, it's going to apply the sepia to any area that we have black, it's going to remove it. So we want to add to this foot because I don't think it accurately got it. Now, one of the tricks is when you're trying to accurately paint something or apply a mask where it needs to be accurate, you usually want a harder brush and a small brush. It's going to let you be a whole lot more accurate. If you have a large soft brush, it's going to spill over and you're going to see where you kind of screwed up and it doesn't look good. It's really hard to see in this foot where it ends and stops, but we're going to be okay with that. If you messed up, you could just paint it back out just to make sure it's clean because it was selecting some of this area. I'm going to paint some black in here just to make sure we don't have any of the sepia on the ground and it's just in our subject. We can come up here. This all looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty accurate. The last thing I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer because I think basically this whole image is just a little bit dark. I'm going to let that apply to the whole image because I think it's the background as well as the subject. But if I did just want to brighten our subject, once again, I could make another clipping mask and just apply it to that specific area. So that's how you sepia tone a specific area inside of a photo in Photoshop. If you have any suggestions on videos that you'd like to see in this follow along series, feel free to leave those below in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.